Hi everyone, we recently moved our website from WordPress to Next.js. This migration was performed with the desire of achieving performance, scalability and customization. Now there are a few steps we need to follow in order to perform this migration. The first step would be to planning the migration. In the first step, we have a few architectures and it totally depends on you and your product that which one you are going to choose. For example, in our website, we had only blogs that we needed to migrate from WordPress to Next.js. But if you have users on your WordPress website, you need to first export the user data using any plugins, then create a schema in your backend and import all the data that you have just exported in your newly created database. And let's dive into all the architectures that we have here. The first architecture that came into my mind was micro frontend. How this works is that keep these blogs on the WordPress while migrating the rest of the pages on Next.js. Both the WordPress and Next.js would run on the same server with same domain. Next.js would be running on port 3000 while WordPress would be present only in the slash blog directory in the root. Some advantages are this allows for gradual migration minimizing disruption to existing content. On the other hand, this architecture has some complexity in maintaining two different systems. An example of this architecture would be one finance website. On this slash magazine, it runs WordPress. Let me show you. We go on inspect. Then on sources, you can see this has WP content and WP includes. This is running WordPress, the slash magazine. But if we go to the root, onefinance.co.in, this is running on Next.js. You'll be able to see it has Next static. Now coming to the second architecture, this one is pretty simple and self-explanatory. We would move the WordPress block to a subdomain while keeping the rest of the pages on the main domain powered by Next.js. Advantages of this architecture is clear separation between block content and other site content, provides flexibility in managing different sections of the website. But as we have the blog on a subdomain, it may impact SEO due to splitting content across multiple subdomains. An example of this architecture would be this. My personal portfolio has the blogs on a subdomain. The blog on my portfolio website is present on a subdomain instead of the main domain. This is isolated but not actually made with WordPress. But my actual portfolio website is created on the root domain. Now coming to architecture 3. We can use a static site generator like Nextra for blogs and proceed with the simplest transition for the rest of the pages. This simplifies the migration process by leveraging static site generation, provides better performance and security compared to traditional WordPress setups. The downside is that it has limited flexibility in dynamic content management compared to WordPress. And showing an example would be the currently migrated website of IndieGeek. This is a normal page created in Next.js. Coming to the block section, this is the block section that Nextra powers. These block pages are statically generated at the build time. So if you click on any one of them, it will just load very instantly. Coming back to the next architecture, we have server side rendering with headless CMS. In this, we can use any technology for the front end and move the existing WordPress to a subdomain, keeping it in the headless mode. Or you can use alternate CMS like Hygraph CMS. Let's see an example of this architecture. The blocks from Type Finance is being fetched from WordPress, which is running in headless mode, but the rest of the website is created in Next.js. You can use any kind of technology for the front end. Coming back to the next one, we can export all the existing pages of WordPress website using any plugins and upload to S3 bucket, retaining their path and file naming. Later, a simple Node.js server can resolve each request path and fetch the static files using reverse proxy. This provides faster load time as we already have the pre-built static page. But exporting the pages, keeping proper format and styling and later doing necessary changes are really challenging. Coming to the last architecture, we have static site generation with static serving. In Next.js, we can leverage static site generation along with export. In your existing WordPress website, if you are having some users, you can use Next.js for backend and migrate the user data and use Next.js with static site generation and use the out directory from the Next.js export into Next.js static serving. 
For simple example, just like if you make a backend and use templating engine like EJS or HPS for the frontend, instead of that, it serves Next.js out directory. One simple advantage is that both the Next.js and Nest.js runs by default on 3000 port. So by using static site generation, we don't need to run Next.js on the server. Instead, we just get the output directory and statically serve the file using Nest.js. This architecture is complex compared to a purely static or purely server rendered solution. So based on our needs, which was basically blogs, we have chosen the architecture number three, which is using Nextra or DocuSaurus. So as we are using Next.js, so we are much more compatible with Nextra. So let me show you what is Nextra. This is the landing page of Nextra. Let's scroll down a bit to see what it actually is. In simple words, Nextra is used to create static content websites. It uses .mdx file, which is basically markdown extension, to create new pages. Let's click on the documentation and you will be able to see the guide to get started. Let's click on the guide. Here are a few things that you can explore. Let me just give you a brief about this. We had to export each and every page we had in WordPress to mdx file basically the blogs so for that i have written a simple script let me show you that this is a simple script that uses the wpjson api for wordpress let me show you the live example of this one i'll open this up in another tab but as we don't have indgeek.com currently on wordpress so let me show you on turbo hosty turbo hosty.com this is another wordpress website that is currently live so it has an endpoint called wpjson let me do pretty print and you'll be able to see it has all the data. This is a really, really big chunk of data, the JSON. And it has all the content, the thumbnails, the featured image, the title, the content, excerpt, everything. So we have written a simple script that will just simply fetch this one and grab the featured image, the author name, the ID of the post, date, slug, title, and content. Everything that will be grabbed and stored locally. And once we have access to the MDX files, then we can use Nextra to create blogs like this. You can see there are many, many blogs and these are not manually migrated. All of these were migrated using a simple script and Nextra plus Next.js. Once you are done running this script that fetches a specific amount of post, let me now show how we can actually export the pages into MDX file. So this is the endpoint that we are fetching. Let me show this in another tab and replace this indgeek.com with the previous domain name. Now on top of wpjson we have this wp slash v2 slash posts and in this we can say per page give me 100 blogs and show me the page 1. These are the queries. Let's press enter. Now this endpoint fetches all the blog posts we have here and it is showing only 100 per page and currently it is on page 1. So let me do pretty print and you can see this is the content that we have and this is the slug for a specific blog post. This is the link that previously we had and this is the title and we can pick this object. We have it very long here. I think this is ending nowhere else. So this is a single object that we have and it represents a single blog. So we need this slug, the title, the content, maybe, maybe you need the excerpt which shows a specific, the first phase of this whole content, maybe the first two lines and you might need the ID and the publish date if you need so. And let me open up the script that we had. It extracts everything from a single post. We are running a loop on all the posts. Then it is extracting all the media files that we previously uploaded to our WordPress and saving them locally in this asset directory with the same name that we had. After we are done with grabbing image name and everything, we have all our blog content inside the content.rendered, which is this one, content.rendered. We have all the blog here. Inside this whole blog, we have images as well. Let me search for wp-content. You can see this is the image URL starting from starting from here till .jpg. 
So what we need to do instead of wb content slash upload slash date, we just need to give the file path or the directory path. So for that, we have simply done a regex and replaced them with the folder path. And we have not changed the image name as well. And once you are done creating your MDX file, it will look something like this. In the pages directory in Next.js, we have slash blog slash every blog we have exported till now. These are all the blogs. Let me open a simple one. This is a simple markdown extension file similar to markdown. And you can preview this by control shift V. And it will show up something basic like this. The images are not showing as we have absolute path name in there. So this is the basic thing and Nextra on top of this provides some styling. And if you want to do some extra styling on this, we have this global CSS. You can override Nextra classes using this. So these are for Swiper and all. And for Nextra, we have some CSS that overrides the Nextra's default CSS. So this is what you can say the MD file, the MDX file. And when we open this up, this is what you get on the website. This is really cool, really awesome. And this is very easy to set up and coming back to the code. So apart from this blocks, let me collapse this one. You also get to create this custom pages just by simply creating a file based routing path. So let's suppose we are to, going to create this about us page. So we will just simply do about hyphen us dot chase and this about hyphen us would be our route name. So this is the about page. You can see and this is the about page and this is a component that holds all the content of about page. Let me open this up about page in our website. Everything is really easy and quick to set up. So this was all about this architecture video. If you like this video, drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this.